why you're still obsessed with the narcissist, obsessed and ruminating over this relationship that has broken down, that has been so abusive towards the end that you've been cruelly discarded from or you've had to leave yourself because it has been not sustainable. A lot of people don't realise that this is part of narcissistic abuse and they find themselves beating themselves up because they can't stop thinking about the narcissist post the relationship, particularly the intimate relationship. So today I'd really like to get into this subject so that we can blast it out of all proportion and stop people suffering so much or at least alleviate the time span that this ruminating goes on. I think one of the things that's most helpful is to know once you even, you know, you get this education and you get on these channels and you realise, hey, I'm not alone. Like, I'm not crazy like the narcissist said. There isn't something really drastically wrong with me that I might have suspected at different times because we all self-reflect if we're not narcissistic. And we're left, why can't I get this person off my mind? I keep having flashbacks. I keep going back to different things that happened, you know, getting light bulb moments and dreadful moments. So that's basically what rumination is. And we all go through it. You're not alone. So feel part of this community and get support here with people who are both going through it, have been through it and understand what you're going through. This is normal. It's a normal part of the recovery process. So please take heart from that and know that it does end. Guys, if you would like to be part of this community, please subscribe, please share the content and get it out there to help someone else. Thank you. Okay, today I'm going to get into the causes or the reasons why rumination happens, why we tend to obsess over the narcissist when the relationship has ended. This is part one. Part two is going to be how to stop or quicken up the recovery process and get out of that ruminating phase. So let's get right into it. All right, the first cause that of rumination or that you're obsessed over the narcissist is that basically your brain needs to be rewired. You have been essentially brainwashed. You have been manipulated and you have been groomed and your brain needs to rewire itself. So all the messages that the narcissist gave you in the relationship about them, about who they were, about the relationship and where it was going and the future faking, and then about you and who you were needs to be rewired. And we will get into that in part two as to tools to do that, to recover. Number two I've got down here is we need to re-establish reality after the relationship with the narcissist because the narcissist has essentially very subtly and slowly brought us into a false reality, a false narrative, their narrative of how the world works, how we fit into the world and we fit into their relationship, who they are and more on what point one was. It's literally getting out of that fake reality that we may have lived in even for up to five, ten 20, 30 years with the narcissist and re-establishing the relationship in the world and our place in it. The third cause I have down in relation to why you're obsessing over the narcissist is we tend to lose a sense of ourselves in this relationship. And don't beat yourself up over this. A lot of people will coin it codependent we do actually establish or go into a kind of a codependent state when we're with a narcissist because we are groomed to do that because it suits the narcissist purposes to have us in that way because they can control us better. So 
Whether you have codependent tendencies originally before you get into the relationship, not everybody does, you will end up after being with a narcissist for any length of time in a state of codependency. So you're you're obsessing over the narcissist because you're codependent with them. You've learned how to get your validation from them and they've taken over your self-validating functions to a larger or lesser degree. The fourth reason that we tend to obsess over narcissists when the relationship has broken down is we tend to hold on to a toxic hope. We haven't figured out what's happened quite yet. We are looking at the relationship and wondering, because we don't want to let it go, because we are still hooked on the good parts of it and believing the narcissist's mask and believing that there, may, there must be some good there, some truth somewhere, because it doesn't make sense, logical sense, that a person can be so opposite to what they present. So our brain is scrambling around trying to find something to cling on to. Maybe they were going through something. Maybe this is just an aberration. Maybe they were stressed at work. Um, maybe their childhood trauma has really blown up here and they need help and therapy and I need to stand by them. And therefore the relationship has only gone downhill because of this circumstance. So toxic hope keeps the rumination alive and keeps us seeking reasons that this has happened because it does not make sense. The weird and shocking ending, the thing the narcissist things the narcissist say at the end of their relationship. You know, one day loving, the next day don't want to talk to you ever again. So this is kind of a bit mind blowing. So yes, toxic hope and trying to figure out what the hell went on and could the relationship be saved in some way keeps us stuck in that place that the narcissist wants you stuck in, believe it or not. Okay, um, the fifth reason I have down that, that it's very hard to overcome this relationship is the narcissist may be still in your life in some capacity. Very difficult for people that have children with the narcissist, but not at all impossible to overcome with the practices that we go into in the next podcast. So yes, maintaining any kind of contact, if you don't have to, get rid, no contact, totally abandon that person into the ether because they've abandoned you in every way. They were very false with you. They did not represent the truth of themselves and they do not deserve to be in touch with you still. So if you get the let's be friends jargon or you're still getting people that they know, you know, contacting you, all the flying monkey stuff, all the little texts or whatever. No contact is the answer here. No contact is the biggest help to stop the rumination because you're not feeding it. You're not feeding the obsession. And remember, narcissists are highly manipulative. So knowing that you're suffering, knowing that you're in shock and the voyeurism of the narcissist wanting to be further empowered and fed by your pain will keep them manipulating you in some way to keep you in touch in some circumstances. So be really aware of the healing quality of your no contact with the narcissist. The sixth reason I have down is, yeah, okay, this is one. Accepting the grieving process. Essentially, the person that you were in love with was a hologram, was a fantasy, but your experience of the relationship was real. So to you, you've had two deaths. You've had the death of the relationship and the death of a person that was created for you that doesn't exist. That is pretty mind-blowing stuff. So if you're beating yourself up for being still obsessed with the narcissist and the relationship, stop beating yourself up right now because this is mind-blowing stuff. You're not only grieving the relationship, you're grieving a person that didn't exist. And that has to be 
regulated and sorted out. And we, again, we'll go into this in part two. This, the function of this podcast is to just let you know everybody obsesses and ruminates over narcissists, or at least the majority of people do. And I mean, put down in the comments how long it's taken you to stop ruminating. That may give people who are going through it right now and starting off some support in the fact they're not alone, that it lasts quite a long time without the tools to get out of it, but that it does end. Okay, a complex grieving process, guys, is one of the reasons you may still be obsessing over the narcissist. I think this is number seven. Okay, this kind of feeds into some of the earlier reasons. It's the narcissist has essentially set you up in the relationship as this being the the bee's knees of all relationships that you'll ever come across. And it's just the two of you sailing into the sunset. And the two of you are the all powerful, wonderful couple that in some ways, if you go into the ego functions, they'll be getting you into the, you know, we will have this and we will have that. We will have houses, holidays, children, businesses, money, designer clothes. If they've gone into the other element that narcissists often go into, you're their soulmate. You're going to explore your inner selves together. The two of you are twin flames. There's all this kind of building up of this two of you fantasy that's very hard to let go of because they've actually brainwashed you again into this state of belief. And this is what I often refer to in the podcasts as a kind of a cult-like um, belief where they're saving you and you're saving them and you believe that this is the only way forward. You have true faith in the two of you together and this is repetitive, repetitive push and pull and um, manipulation of you into this belief, isolation of you from other people, huge admiration in the love bomb stage of you and a total future faking, strongly established belief in the two of you against the world and the world outside is not a good place to be, but the two of you together are going to make it and make it into wonderful, wonderful stuff. That, that grooming is part of the ruminating process that needs to be let go of and unraveled. So the getting back, oh yeah, number eight, getting back on your feet um sometimes in some circumstances in the intimate relationship with a narcissist there can have been a lot of financial abuse they often narcissists will try and get you to leave your job and will get you financially dependent on them or you have children and they don't want you to work they will get you to believe in the stay-at-home parenting which is a wonderful thing to do if you're with a person who supports you genuinely and is not using your lack of financial independence to control you. So some people are left in a dreadful state post-narcissistic abuse in a financial situation that they have to rebuild. So there's the anger that goes along with that in that people will be beating themselves up for getting themselves into that situation and not seeing it for what it was. And please don't again do this. Narcissists um, have honed this manipulation to a very high degree. And it's very hard to decipher when you're in the relationship that this is part and parcel of the narcissist's control over you. And financial abuse is a big part of that. So the reason you know, that it's difficult to stop obsessing over what's happened to you and the narcissist is you're in a situation that you're having to rebuild from. Now, again, we'll go into this in the next part two. This is not necessarily a negative situation. It depends on how you look at it. It's not a nice situation to be in. You don't deserve to be in it. But this is one of the reasons that you would definitely, the narcissist would definitely be in your mind 
and the anger that this person has, this injustice, the anger about the injustice will keep you obsessing about the narcissist. Guys, we're nearly at the end. We have two more reasons why we obsess. Uh, number nine is the narcissist is throwing the new supply in your face. If you're still in some contact with the narcissist or perhaps you're in a community where people feed this back to you, that it's unavoidable that you get news about the narcissist, particularly as they're going on this PR campaign about how happy they are in their new life. Now, this comes up quite frequently. People are saying one of the hardest things to do, Paula, to get over this, you know, thinking and obsessing over the narcissist is sure they're going around telling everyone how happy they are. And the fact that they're telling everyone how happy they are and then how bad your relationship was is a stark contrast. And you're the one that's feeling that you weren't good enough and all those things and you're seeing this person and how the narcissist is saying, this person does this for me and that for me and I'm so happy. I couldn't be happier. In fact, I'm the happiest person in the world. Now, People that are happy do not have to go around telling everybody that they're happy because they're too happy being happy to do that. So let's hold on to that little manipulation of the narcissist who's trying to get you to stay in your ruminating stage, to stay obsessing over the narcissist because without your obsession and pain and them kind of thinking that that's what it's going to do to you. Without that, they don't really exist. The fake mask and the person that they need you to believe in doesn't exist without you giving it the power of existence. So when you stop believing in them as being a person that exists the way they're presenting themselves or a person of value, you win. The tenth reason and the last reason I have down, guys, about us ruminating and getting stuck in our ruminating about the narcissist is a very, very big one. And we have hit on this before on the channel, and it's our chemical addiction to the narcissist. It's our chemical addiction in relation to how they made us feel because we believed in them. We believed in them when they told us we were amazing. It doesn't take away from the fact that we are amazing, but we associated that feel good factor with them telling us we were amazing. And again, we can re-regulate our dopamine levels, our serotonin levels and get that oxy, oxytonin, I think it is, which bonds us to people put in the right place, put where it belongs. We take our oxytonin, if, tell me if that's the right way to pronounce it, back from the narcissist. It does not belong with that person. They are not worthy of our time, of our thoughts, of our energy and of our rumination. So we're going to hit this in the next podcast in relation to tools to get us out of the state that the narcissist wants us and needs us to stay in. So sorry for the, no, I shouldn't be saying sorry for the enthusiasm, guys. I really, really, really want you to move away from this stage because I remember what it was like. It's soul destroying, but when you understand it, when you put the work in, you can get out of it. So do not despair. If you feel you can't go on, if you feel you don't see a way forward if you feel that you've never felt this bad and you're thinking that you're crazy for still thinking about the narcissist after what they've done to you. You are not. You are going through a normal stage of post-narcissistic abuse and you are going to be okay and you are going to get out of it. Bye for now.